Hi everyone in today's session let's take a look at the major poets of the romantic period The romantic period which began in the latter half of the reign of George the 3rd and ended with the accession of Queen Victoria in 1837 was undoubtedly an age of poetry Unlike the neoclassical poets who favored intellect reason and satire the poets of the age gave importance to feelings intuition and imagination they were also interested in depicting individual experiences in the language of common man the french revolution of 1789 exerted a huge influence on english poetry the various stages of the revolution affected the poets in different ways so the poetry of the early revolutionary period differs from that of the late revolutionary period thus the romantic poets have been grouped into two the older group or the first generation and the younger group or the second generation the older group or the first generation or the older romantics consists of william wordsworth sir walter scott samuel taylor coleridge and robert southey The younger group or the second generation or the younger romantics comprises George Gordon Byron, Percy Bysshe Shelley and John Keats. All the romantics William Wordsworth 1770 to 1850. William Wordsworth rightly called by Matthew Arnold as the highest priest of nature as one of the greatest poets of the romantic era. He was born on April 7, 1770 at Cockermouth in Cumberland. While he was studying at St John's College Cambridge, the French Revolution broke out and Wordsworth was totally influenced by the ideals of revolution. The watchwords of French Revolution, liberty, equality and fraternity intoxicated him. Soon after his graduation he paid a visit to France and stayed at Orleans and Blois. But in 1792 he returned to Paris when the revolution took a bloody turn. With his sister Dorothy Wordsworth settled in a little cottage at Dorset. The meeting with Coleridge was a turning point in Wordsworth's life. Together they published The Lyrical Ballads in 1798. considered as the harbinger of the romantic movement the first edition of the lyrical ballads consisted of 23 poems 19 by wordsworth and 4 by coleridge in the preface to lyrical ballads wordsworth stated his theory of poetry according to wordsworth poetic art is the breadth and finer spirit of all knowledge and poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility after the publication of lyrical ballads wordsworth moved to germany his four months stay there according to arthur crompton rickett broaden his mind or intensify his powers wordsworth spent his last years of life at lake district in his well known residence rydal mount An evening walk and descriptive sketches were the earliest poems by Wordsworth. His significant poems include Tintern Abbey, The Prelude, Resolution and Independence, The Solitary Reaper, The Daffodils, Ode on the Intimations of Immortality, and the sonnets dedicated to national independence and liberty. The Prelude which began in 1798 and published posthumously in 1850 was a autobiographical poem written by Wordsworth according to Edward Albert prelude is the record of Wordsworth's development as a poet as a poet Wordsworth unique quality is his treatment of nature Edward Albert observes his dealings with nature are his chief glory as a poet through his poems wordsworth proclaims the moral influence exerted by nature on him wordsworth's pantheism the belief that nature is the physical reflection of the divine being on whom the title world's greatest interpreter of nature's message Samuel Taylor Coleridge 
1772 to 1834. Carl Rich was born on October 23, 1772 at Devonshire. After his studies at Christ Hospital, Carl Rich entered Cambridge in 1791. Like Wordsworth, Coleridge was also influenced by the French Revolution. With Robert Satie, Coleridge planned an ideal republic, pandisocracy. In 1797, Coleridge met Wordsworth and this resulted in the publication of Lyrical Ballads. After the production of Lyrical Ballads, Coleridge went to Germany and studied there. In 1799, he returned to England. His ill health and addiction to opium made his poetic output slender. Coleridge's poetic output is small, but what he produced show his real poetical genius. According to Stopford Brooke, all that he did excellently might be bound up in 20 pages, but it should be bound in pure gold. His important poems include The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, Christabel, Kubla Khan, Dejection and Ode, and Frost at Midnight. Biographia Literaria, published in 1817, has the most important prose work written by Coleridge. Inga Romantics, George Gordon Byron, 1788-1824 Byron, the representative poet of the Romantic Age, was born in London and educated at Harrow and Cambridge. During his university days, Byron started on a tour of Europe and the Orient. In 1816, he left England and never returned. In 1824, Byron went to Greece and he participated in the Greek War of Independence. While engaged in the war field, he was contracted a fever and died. Byron on enough reputation as a poet in his lifetime itself. According to Arthur Crompton Rickett, there is no other poet in the Romantic Revival who touched Europe so unmistakably as Byron. Byron has to his credit several volume of verses. His first book, Hours of Idleness, was published in 1807. Child Harold's Pilgrimage is the autobiographical work written by Byron. The Prisoner of Gillen, Don Juan and Lara are his other well-known poems. Unlike Wordsworth and Coleridge, Byron was scarcely influenced by the early phase of the French Revolution. He stood for the destructive side of revolution. He was a born revolutionary. Percy Bursch Schill 1792-1822 A great prophet of faith and hope in the world, Percy Bursch Shelley is a romantic poet par excellence. He was born on August 4, 1792. After his schooling at Eton, Shelley went up to Oxford, but he was expelled from there for his pamphlet, The Necessity of Atheism. His first major poem, Queen Mab, was published in 1813. In 1818, Shelley went to Italy and never returned to England. He met with a premature death in a boat collapse in 1822. According to William J. Long, as a lyric poet, Shelley is one of the supreme geniuses of our literature. Ode to the West Wind, The Cloud and to a skylark are his famous lyrics. He had a strong passion for reforming the world. According to him, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world and can go a long way in reforming the world. Prometheus Unbound is one of the most successful long poems written by Shelley. It represents archetypal humanity. John Keats, 1795-1821 The most perfect of the romanticists, John Keats was a great worshipper of beauty. Keats was born in London in 1795. He started his career as an apprentice to a surgeon, but he abandoned his profession in 1817. In the same year, 
Keats published his first volume of poems. He died at the age of 26. Keats dealt with beauty, nature and mythology in his poems. According to him, poetry should come as naturally as the leaves to a tree. Ode to a Nightingale, Ode to Autumn, Ode on a Gracian Urn are some of the well-known odes written by Keats. His other works include Endymion, Hyperion, Lamia and Isabella or the Port of Basel.